Hello again, audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, back today to talk about more sound gear. And today we are going to take a look at the Shit Modius Digital to Analog Converter, or DAC for short. This costs 199 US dollars directly from Shit's website, and I will put a link to where you can buy it in the description below. So I have had the Modius here around uh, since I want to say November ish of. Uh, 2020. So it's been close to a year now. I shoot this uh, here in the first third of October 2021. And uh, it's it's been a solid unit. I mean, I um, have not listened to it a ton over the last several months because uh, I just have higher end stuff around. However, I kept this because as I've been reviewing things, it just became apparent that this presents a really excellent value and as therefore served as a reference for me for DAX under about $200, right? I think this is kind of the, the budget enthusiast, or at least is a very good kind of budget enthusiast level DAC product here. So let's talk a little bit about this DAC here. Now, I don't think I've actually done a full written review of this. Um, I have put hints in various places around that I think that it is an excellent $200 reference DAC uh, and so forth. So um, I don't have a written review for this one, but so I will try to be as thorough as I can in this video about this without uh, just rambling on and on forever. So uh, let's talk about features and stuff. I mean, it's it is a shit product. Like, I mean, you could just tell by the aesthetic with the, the curved aluminum, you know, chassis and faceplate here and the gray sides and all of that. And just, it, it has that general look. Now, the, the material here is not quite as thick or heavy as like Asgard 3 or Bifrost 2, like in terms of build quality there. Um, but it's still like a, a fairly well built and put together unit. Now, one... Uh, quibble that I do have with the build is this button right here. The only button on the front panel is an input selector switch. And then there are four LEDs right here uh, to tell you which input has been selected. Now this button is just kind of in here, right? It's, I mean, right by the microphone, if I jiggle the unit a little bit, okay? That noise that you hear, that's just this button rattling around right there. Okay. And so that would be the, the one real complaint I have about the build for the price. But again, a $200 DAC, all right? Now, what else you get for $200, let's look at the back panel, is it is balanced, right? And so that's a big draw because they are becoming more common now. But when this was released, this was one of the few $200 or less DACs out there that had um, XLR balanced outputs. Okay, so um, that is one of the key features. Now, since this has been released, there are other products that have come along, like the uh, Topping D10 Balanced, I think, is out now. That is also a balanced DAC under $200. There is the iFi Zen, which is up to a V2 now, I believe, um, that has a 4.4 millimeter balanced output on its DAC portion as well. So there are some out there that are balanced. Um, but this one was one of the very few. I mean, that's still not a ton of models that I just named there. Uh, and then, of course, there was the, the Gishelli Labs, or excuse me, Gishelli Labs um, Enog 2 out there for a while that uh, was under $200 but did not have a USB input. Okay, so and again, that when this was released, it was one of the few that... Uh, checked all of those boxes at the price point, right? And so let's talk a little bit more about the, the inputs and outputs then. So I mentioned the balanced nature. So here's your XLR balanced outputs. You do get the single-ended RCA outputs that are pretty standard. And then, hello, what have we here? This is an AES, SPDEIF digital input, right? So this is um, usually a feature that's found on much higher end and more expensive pieces, but this is a three pin XLR connector that is basically SPDIF over XLR, essentially, okay? And then we have the RCA coax in, a Toslink optical input, and then we have two USB, two micro USB connections, which is kind of a shit standard on their lower end DAX too, where one of them is signal and the other one is power, okay, for five volt DC power. 
Now, you can run the Modius off of just the USB signal port, just the power from USB uh, connected to your computer if you want to. Um, however, I do recommend using the uh, power input in addition to that if that's what you're going to do is because I think the performance stabilizes a little bit when it gets just a, that little bit much more power from, um, from this input right here. And you can use most USB charging bricks for like cell phones and that sort of thing to power this and it works relatively fine. Um, and you can get a little bit more improved performance if you use something like an iFi iPower or, or something like that. Um, but any, any kind of five volt uh, power source there can be plugged in right there. So you get four digital inputs, including USB, right? Including that AES, which I have yet to use on a product of this price, but it's there. Okay, two SPDIF inputs, one coax, one toast link, all that. And then, of course, you get that balanced output. Now, the, the USB input is also of Schitt's Unison um, variation, their in-house USB solution. That is pretty solid. Um, and uh, this one, like the Bifrost 2 that I reviewed recently, which is the big brother model to this, uh, you can switch away from the USB input on this without breaking the USB connection to the computer or smartphone or DAP or whatever it is you have plugged in via USB, which means like you again, makes it easier to use exclusive modes and, and do multitasking and all of that. If you're on a windows 10 or a Mac desktop or something like that, I think that's a real big ergonomic advantage that Unison USB brings that I have not seen a lot of at this price point or even higher, um, in, in terms of USB connections on, on DAX. Okay. So pretty well-rounded feature set there. Oh, I should mention that um, this one uses the, the AKM, I think, 4493 DAC chip in it, which was not even flagship when this was launched, but that's okay. Like, it's still a, a pretty decent chip that's in there. Um, and there was a stock of them, which, like, since this product was launched, like, AKM had that warehouse fire and all of that, which has really shaken things up. Um and then also the conversion options on this max out at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz PCM, all right? So if you're gonna do DSD, you'll need to do some software level conversion for that, okay? Um, there's no MQA option on this either. So it's just straight maximum of 24 bit, 192 kilohertz PCM files for conversion, which really still covers the vast majority of music out there as long as you're not a title user and need that MQA feature. Okay, so then on to the sound. So, you know, as I have mentioned here like already, like sonically, I think this is a, a really excellent reference piece at its price point at $200. Okay, so... Um, I have reviewed on this very young channel already and have heard even more than are in video form. I have some other written reviews of other pieces out there, but I have reviewed a lot of pieces of shit, haha, that are under 1000 US dollars. Okay. And I mean, they are a source gear company. They make DAX, they make amps, they make uh, preamps, they make um, uh, vinyl preamps, you know, those kinds of things, some EQs and that sort of thing. So they are a source gear company. And I've heard enough of their gear to, to observe a few things. For one thing, like the shit gear, particularly under that $1,000 price point, is very good at timbre. It's very good at spatial presentation. And it is very good at like the punch, the dynamic kind of impact and slam um, in there, like at their price points. Okay, that is very much true of the Modius. Compared to its competition, I think it does a better job with the spatial presentation. You get a more coherent, believable soundstage. That's not necessarily, it's not huge, it's not small, it's just kind of there, but it's just very coherent. And the imaging and the separation within that soundstage, I think, is pretty class-leading, at least amongst the DACs that I have heard that are 200 or less. One of the big elephants in the room that I, that I haven't heard is the, the Gishelli J2. 
And I hope to hear that one someday soon. Um, but that's also a little bit more money, and then it becomes even more expensive if you put the the USB option on it. So um, with that caveat aside, like I mean, the spatial presentation is as good as I've heard um, for a DAC this price or lower. Okay, and then the same goes for the timbre. And again, timbre being that do the reproduced sounds sound like what they're supposed to or sound like the real thing? Do voices sound like voices? Do pianos sound like pianos? Do guitars sound like guitars? Do drums sound like drums? Those kinds of things. And again, this one for the price point is doing it better than other DACs that I've heard at this price or lower. And then we get to like that impact and slam um, kind of thing. And yes, this... Uh, this DAC will punch you. Okay, It has a fair amount of dynamic range to it, and then it has a lot of that physicality and that punch and the pop, especially if you give it more than just USB signal power and you use this secondary uh, power input here and use a nice charging brick to go with it. Like Then you can really start to, to um, hear and feel that dynamic impact come in. All right, So those things. Now, Detail retrieval, to my ear, is not a thing that shit chases as aggressively as some other companies do at their price points. Now, I think that's where this one, like, it is a little bit more detailed than, say, the, the $130-ish dollar pieces like the Topping E30 or the, the iFi Zen that I mentioned earlier. A little bit more resolution than those, but not a huge amount. Like, it, it um, that feature is good. Like the resolution is good, but it doesn't jump out as me as uh, out at me as being as much of a strength as the other things that I just mentioned in terms of the spatial presentation, the timbre, and the dynamic impact. Okay, so still good there, but not as strong as those other three. Now, where another thing that I've learned about the shit house sound. Let's talk about that. Is when they want to. They can have two kind of sound, different sound signatures. They have kind of a neutral warm leaning signature where like the Bifrost 2, the Asgard 3, um, the single ended output of the Jotunheim 2 all for example are kind of more of that neutral warm. Just a little bit of warmth in that signature from a perceived frequency response sound point. Uh, and then... They, if when they want to, they can go with like an almost dead neutral, studio neutral kind of sound signature. And examples there would be the single, or the, excuse me, the balanced output of the Jotunheim 2 amp, um, like the Heresy and IE Magni kind of, of sound signatures, and this one. Okay. This one is a little bit more dead studio neutral in its, um, perceived frequency response sound signature like um you're gonna get a, a really kind of clean clear not really any kind of noticeable emphasis on any frequencies in terms of like a presence standpoint although for some i think the increased dynamic punch that this gives over its um, similarly priced competition might be perceived as a little bit more bass presence but i don't think the bass is actually elevated i think it's just a little bit more active and punchy um, there, so I I would still would still say it's more of a, a neutral sound signature. So, I mean, there we go, there we have it. I think those are the key points. Is uh, you get a really excellent, uh, like reference le caliber DAC uh, for the price. So if you can handle the fact that it uh, doesn't have all of the big flashy decoding options like DSD or MQA and it tops out at 24 bit 192 kilohertz PCM, right? Um, then yeah, like stay, this is a, a really good choice there. Um, oh, before I go and before I forget, I will also finally mention that the USB input, the, the Unison USB on here does not have a galvanic isolation like it does on the, the Bifrost 2 uh, and higher DACs from their line. Um, that does have some sonic consequences, I think. So this one does not sound as impressive from the USB input as like the Bifrost 2 does from it, from its USB input in comparison to its other inputs. The Bifrost 2 is a higher performing, higher caliber piece altogether. Okay, so I'm not saying that this one should sound that good. I'm just saying that in comparison to the quality you get from the other inputs, like the Bifrost 2 was pretty impressive from its USB compared to its SPDIF inputs. This one, 
less of a gap there. And in fact, if you have a high quality SPDIF source, like if you're going to use a DAP or something like that as your primary source that has an SPDIF output on it, I think like one of these two actually can sound a little bit better in, than the USB in this case. Not that the USB is bad, it's just that um, with a quality SPDIF output, meaning, you know, not the motherboard output on your desktop computer, okay? But like uh, if you use a DAP or if you have a CD transport or something like that, then I think this one actually sounds a little bit better um, from its SPDIF over its, its USB, okay? Um, so last comment there, I think. So let's uh, sum this up real quick. Excellent reference piece for $200 in a digital analog converter. Lots of input options. I think it sounds a little bit better from SPDI, SPDIF from a quality source than it does from USB from a PC or something like that, but it still sounds pretty decent from USB. You get good dynamic punch and slam. You get excellent spatial presentation. You get excellent timbre and reasonably good, although not as impressive as those other three resolution from this in a studio neutral signature. And it's balanced for under 200 bucks. Okay, which can help with ground loop noise and that sort of thing. So excellent value piece. And anytime I get a DAC in that's like $250 or under, this will be the measuring stick. Okay, and has been and will continue to be for a while. So I am Wave Theory. I've been reviewing sound gear, mostly headphone gear for a little over a year in writing on Hi-Fi Guides Forum and HeadFi. So uh, please check out my work there. And otherwise, uh, please like and subscribe to my relatively young YouTube channel here if you like what you see. And uh, until next time, enjoy the music.